So which wheel and tyre system is the fastest? Now as road cyclists, we have three options when it comes to wheels and tyres. We have clinchers, tubular tyres, and also tubeless tyres and wheels. Now, all three systems have relative advantages and disadvantages, but we want to find out which is the fastest. Now, traditionally, a lot of people assume that tubular tyres, as used by the pros, are the fastest tyres available. So we've come here to Palmer Park Velodrome in Reading to see if that is the case. So our experiment has two parts. Firstly, we're going to ride on the rollers at a set gear and a set cadence and record the power and speed achieved of the different tyre systems in a bid to calculate the rolling resistance. And we're also going to ride the tyres around this velodrome here because this is a more realistic road surface and will give potentially a different, slightly different result. And we're going to combine the two results. Now, unfortunately, Dr Hutch, our usual test rider, couldn't make it today because he's at home practicing his waving. But fear not, for we have managed to find a Cycling Weekly anonymous test pilot. Some say that he took the Box Hill Strava KOM on a recovery ride. But all that we know is that he's called the Raptor. So first up, we're testing the Vittoria Corsa G tubular, which we've glued to our wheel rims. Now traditionally tubs have been regarded to be the fastest tyres and they're actually a, a full carcass that's sealed all the way around with an inner tube sewn inside the tyre and then these are glued to the wheel rim. Now the disadvantage of tubulars is that they're a much bigger hassle if you have to change them or if you get a puncture. So the next tyre we're testing is the Vittoria Corsa G clincher and to be consistent with the tubular tyres and make it a fairer test we're using these with latex inner tubes because the tubular tyres have latex inner tubes sewn inside and latex is actually a bit faster than butyl. Now lastly we have our tubeless tyre which is a Vittoria Corsa Speed and this is very similar to the clincher except you don't use an inner tube and instead you use some sealant and we've got this orange seal sealant and we'll be putting 20 mils of this in each tyre. Tubeless tyres are a little bit harder to fit, but the advantage is that the sealant can seal punctures as you go. So punctures shouldn't really be a problem. So to minimise variables in the test, we're using the same profile wheels throughout. So we've got DT Swiss RRC 65s in both tubular and clincher versions. And we're also using Vittoria tyres throughout the test as well. Now each set of tyres are ridden at roughly 250 to 300 watts for five minutes to allow them to warm up. And once they've stabilised, they're ridden for a further five minutes at about 300 watts as a test run. To keep things consistent, tyre pressures are going to be kept at 100 psi for each set of tyres and on each run. And this is measured using a digital gauge. And also, the weight of the rider and the bike will be measured on these scales prior to each run. And these are going to be factored in to the final calculations. Now for power measurement, we're gonna use P1 power tap pedals. So all that remains is to start the test. So, where's the ra Raptor, stop playing on Tinder. So he's going to be riding around the velodrome for 10 minutes on each different wheel set and that should give us plenty of data to calculate the rolling resistance. So the Raptor is using correction factors to calculate the coefficient of rolling resistance for each different tyre system. And this is done using the power and speed intervals recorded over one second intervals. And then this is averaged over a full five minutes to give a more accurate result. That was quick. And so the results. So first up was the tubular tyres. 
and they came out with a coefficient of rolling resistance for 0.00298, which equates to 30 watts of rolling resistance at 40 kilometers an hour for an 87 kilogram system weight. The clinchers were next, and they came out with a coefficient of rolling of 0.00285, which is a bit less. And interestingly, this is slightly lower than the tubular tire and equates to 28 watts of rolling resistance, 40 kilometers an hour. So a slight saving, the clinchers are slightly faster. And last up, we have the tubeless tires. And we've recorded a coefficient of rolling resistance of 0.00265, which is the lowest on test. So this equates to 25 watts of rolling resistance at 40 kilometers an hour for an 87 kilogram rider plus bike and is approximately a five watt saving over the tubular tires we tested. The result says that tubeless is the fastest, but why is tubeless the fastest? Well, having spoken to some engineers, I've been informed that it's all down to physics and friction. In a tubular tire, you have the glue layer sticking the tire to the wheel and also the inner tube and both these create friction. In a clincher tire you just have the inner tube creating friction and there's no need to glue the tire to the rim. So you've reduced some rolling resistance and that's why the clincher was slightly faster than the tubular. But in tubeless you don't have the rolling resistance of either an inner tube or gluing the tire to the rim and that dramatically reduces the system's rolling resistance. There is some rolling resistance arguably created by the sealant, but this is much, much, much smaller. Also, the other thing that can affect rolling resistance is the thickness of the carcass of the tyre. In the Victoria Corsa speeds we have, the thickness is really thin, it's only 1.7 millimetres. Now, in a normal tyre, this could be a problem because it means that you've got less puncture protection and the tyre could pierce more easily. However, because you're running tubeless and you have sealant to seal any holes, this isn't a problem, or it's much less of a problem. Overall, tubeless tyres are faster, and it's only a small amount, around five watts we've shown here, but if you're a time trialist, or speed really matters to you, that could be really significant.